In this session, we'll add control of video switches to our PDC Fly. If you haven't followed along, I will invite you to watch the other videos. This is training about how to use React to configure it manually so you can learn a lot of the concepts that is underlying the whole system. Much of the time you'll use default configurations. They are super advanced and they can easily be very intimidating looking at. Now, what you are learning in this series is how this layer tree, how the behaviors work, how you can work with them, even how you can code stuff in JSON inside the system. But just to quickly give you the context, we have set up the controller with the CIN 500 and 300 Canon PDC cameras in a custom configuration. We've also added an ATEM switcher, which is connected, and also a vMix system over here. So we are now about to add those behaviors to this layer called vMix. And there we go. Okay, so what I want to do, what we have done in the other videos, in a sense, is we have marked these buttons here. And I am now on this selected layer. So I right click, I choose create behavior. I just check what this one says that apparently I'm creating behaviors on this layer and I'm happy with that. I get these behaviors and I, now, I will now uh, choose one of them. So if I press edit, I can now select the vMix instance right here. And then I can search up uh, preview select. I think that's what I will do. Preview inputs. Uh, and I think that's actually the one I wanted. It's under the cross point heading right there, preview input. So that feels a little bit nice, like that is what I want. And I would click this one to um, actually the, the parameters that I, I was just choosing here is which of the four mixes, there are four mixes inside vMix, which one of them is it that I'm using. So I'll just choose one as as that uh, destination. So what happens now is that it's it's a choosing a behavior vMix program preview for me here, but I want to do something different than that. I want to use set value, which is a known master behavior in the system instead of that one. And that gives us a little bit um, more a, a continuation of what we have done before. So when I use that parameter with set value, all I need now to tell it is what value is it that I want to have. And that would be value number one, for input number one, and that now gets associated with this button. You don't see it right here, and that's a little bit discouraging, but we can either pin the layer, and now you see it, or we could also, if we unpin the layer, which is like hijacking the visibility, we could also just go into simulation mode, oh sorry, yeah, simulation mode, and then navigate in the menu over to the vMix um, page, in the tree, and then we also see it. So we have done that now, and we can exit this one again. So it's now in place, and we could then copy this value over to the others as well. So I think we'll just batch edit this real quick, and then, uh, wait, I don't need that, but I can now copy this all the way through. And then over here with match value, I will also, uh, wait, I will choose a plus one approach instead. So if I do that, we will now have Number one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, like that. So I have still some work to do, apparently, to get the master behavior set from set value and then all the way down, copy, copy, copy. And then I have now my preview row where I can select these buttons. Uh, actually, I, I think I would prefer to have a green color here. So what I would do is to go in here in the default feedback and I could just pick a green color for these buttons and they would all be green they will light up when they are actually selected. But we are in the situation that the vMix is a simulated environment. It's it's only here, it's not connected, there's nothing behind it, so we really can't see if that is the case. In this video, I wanna be a little bit fancy and do something completely off script. If you're following the PDF file that I'm sort of following here, then I'm doing something that it, that file is not doing. So um, that's my deviation here. I want to have a controller that could both control vMix and the ATEM switches. And I don't want it to be like different configurations that you would load, like changing a project, because that's probably the most typical way you do this. You have different projects that you would load for different productions in different cases, or you would make a copy of a project and modify that and so on. But in this case, I want a controller that is so flexible that I just need to turn a button and then I can swap between ATEM and vMix operations. So I'll go to the vMix layer where I have already created behaviors for selecting preview on the vMix system, something we cannot test right here because we do not have one connected. But I do have an ATEM switcher connected, so I'll just type in ATEM here, create a new layer for that one, shift drag across these. Let me get out of 
simulation mode, shift drag across. Uh, wait, I need to select the layer first and then create behaviors. I can see create them on the atom layer. Yes, please. That sounds great. It's right here. And then I'll pick this one. I'll go up here, add the, the, um, the um, IO reference, uh, pick the atom mini switcher. I now search for preview and preview input video source. Yes, please. ME number one. Okay, submit. And that is now submitted. It will then search for a master behavior, but I don't want to use this. I want to use set value because we have tried that before and we can easily understand what that one does because match value is the value that we will uh, set by pressing this button. And I pick input number one for that purpose. Okay. So um, it's actually in place already. And uh, to really see this working, we will just highlight them all, pick this one for having batch editing, and then we'll use set value, just copy it down. So you need to, you need to really uh, highlight that field first before you can do this. It's like you need to mark what is the value that you want to copy. Likewise, over here, place the cursor there, press plus one, and then you can just copy those values down with incrementation. So we now have these five buttons in place. And trust me, they are actually going to work with an ATEM switcher, which I have ATEM software control right here. So let's just see this, this working, guys. Um, I'll just keep it over here. I change the preview sources right here. Okay. Now I realize that the this this button actually should probably be different. So we could choose uh, color number one. And that would help us a little bit in our demo because then it would light up as I press that one. But also in reverse, if we go over here and enable the simulation mode, you will see that <clears throat> the buttons I'm pressing on the controller is changing the source on the ATEM switcher. And that's, of course, eventually what we want to do here. That is to select sources over here. So that's nice. And what I want now is to modify this slightly so that it becomes even more cool by uh, show more. I will um, use conditional feedback here. Let, let's just see what this says. It says conditional feedback 10. I mean, we covered this in one of the previous videos, but this is really exciting because this is where we can see that the intensity on inherited from the master behavior set value is um, it's on when the IO reference current value is the same as the match value. That is, in other words, 2001, apparently the color number one. So what I want to do here is to change this to a green color. And I did that for the first one. And I thought that this would now light it up in green. So um, maybe I pressed the one th wrong thing. I have a five. That's actually this one. OK, so it, it means that if I go to the color there, uh, color number one, then it's going to be green. OK, so um, <clears throat> this kind of starts to remind me that we may want to simply create a master behavior out of this before we get too far. So we could try that again. This has been covered in previous videos. So we'll just have this uh, preview. Um, master behavior, we'll copy it from a five, create that. Okay, so now we have that and kind of for these buttons, uh, what we should probably do would be to um, get out of simulation mode, and then mark them all up. Now we'll just delete the behaviors. I don't think we'll do so. We'll probably just change their master behavior to this one. And then I Still am a little bit curious if we look in here. Are we good on everything? Match value is fine. The parameters is fine. The master behaviors is that preview. OK, it's all fine. Actually, it's only like a five where we copied from where we do not anymore need to have this value shown. You know, um, I'm the kind of guy who do like the JSON editor. So if I wanted to be absolutely sure, then I would go to the bottom show. No, wait, show JSON. I would do that for the let me see this one from the training layer, because inside of this JSON code, which was covered in like a previous episode, then I will be able to get a little bit of an overview of these. So you can see a number one is defined here and I have those values for the constants defined just fine. And that looks fine and tidy. And so on here on a four, we have a little bit more than I am interested in. So I am um, Ah, okay, I'm actually looking at the wrong thing. 
guys, um, I'm getting not on thin ice. I know what I'm doing, but I am afraid that I may confuse you guys more than is helpful. I was looking at the notice this this layer is the camera selector layer i have no business in there the other layer here is the presets layer no business in there the layer i'm interested in in this is actually you would think is this it is this one vmix but it is in fact the layer inside of it the the one for the atom switch and down here we have these behaviors so let's just check this a1 and a2 a3 a4 and a5 it all looks great However, just to make it super tidy, I would just remove that because we don't need it and save this current file. It's not super critical. You'll know that from the previous video because there we talked about how the, uh, the, the, the consequence of having a master behavior and then on top of that one stuff that is already in the master behavior, it, it won't change the behavior. It's just not conceptually meaningful. But anyway, we now can confirm that our five buttons are using the same master behavior. That definition of green is down here in the master behavior preview that I created. To be honest, you would typically create a master behavior down on like your root layer because then you like have a big collection of stuff you can use everywhere in your tree. But this is the closest position I could place it and it would then be possible to inherit it from these five elements. So I did that. But I want to also show if we have a source on program. That's like tally. So let's add that to the master behavior. And going to the master behavior here, which we're doing right now, I'll add additional conditional feedback, create a new one here. And in that one, I will set the color red. Okay. And um, <clears throat> then I need to make an active if and that active if would be um, I, I could either copy it raw from the other one or I would do it this way probably okay let's do it this way this is the right way so we just pick it from here and then we'll search our program input video source which is that one so if that for Emmy number one is equal to and then we would pick uh, let me see I think behavior IO reference was it current value need to type it correctly Casper so like that okay that was not right somehow all the buttons got painted red and I made a mistake I also know what it is but let me explain what we did down here we actually or I I'll assume full responsibility I said if the program input equals the current value of the IO reference of the behavior which is the preview if program and preview is equal, that's what this says, then paint it red. You know what will happen? If I go to ATEM software control and I make sure that program and preview is not the same, it's all gonna be green and white again. Not meaningful, I did a mistake. If you want to see, because kind of what we wanna do is what we did over here for preview, that worked. So what was that about? It was to compare whether the current value of the IO reference matches the match value. So actually what I need to do down here is that I need to have this one be the constant and then choose match value like that. Submit. So this will work now. Let's just check if it does. So we can just go around here and we see that the program tally is on the button. Nice, right? And the preview tally is equally on the button. Nice. So we got that sorted out and we also have, oh, let's just check if this works. Well, it, we know it works. It's like I can use this one to select preview, but that's also all I can do. And to wrap this up, I want to do something about the layering right now, because right now the ATEM layer is always shown. And I want that to be only the case in certain cases. So my um, once again, anytime you want to control layer visibility, you want to use a variable. So I'm going to create a variable somewhere to manage that layer visibility. And I think I will create it just up here on the atom layer. It can kind of be super. No way. That's a bad idea. I will do it down here. It. Um, yep. I will make. Atom toggle. 
that's the name. And this would typically be a variable that has now been created some crazy place in the tree, unless we're just waiting for the system to, ah, there we go, it's here, all right. I was just afraid for a moment, but we'll just add an option, which is like on. Oh wait, we'll probably put it off by default and on like that, all right. So off by default on, and we could then type in Atom and vmix if we wanted to. So uh, the other way around, right? So when it's on Atom off vmix, And that's in place now. So what I want to do on this layer as well is to uh, take the encoder, some of these encoders here, and then create a behavior, um, make uh, associate it with my variable that we have just made. It was the atom toggle. Thank you. And then you could type toggle. We have uh, like toggle states. Uh, you could even take something like toggle red, and if you choose toggle red, uh, then or oh, maybe toggle on hold is a cool thing. Ah, what was that doing? Toggle hold. That was an interaction pattern. Like toggle hold here. Hold down action added to red toggle. Oh, toggle on hold red. Okay. Now let's just take toggle on hold. Okay. Toggle options on and off. Assuming an option list of two lighting up if value is different from the default. Okay. Um, let's see. It's just that I was... Um, I was looking at this and thinking that it was nice that it was like on hold, but that may apply better to a four way button. I don't know. Okay, let's try this one and see if it works. Okay, vmix atom, vmix atom, vmix atom. So all we need to do now is to basically go here, add an active if condition and say, if the variable called atom toggle equals a literal value on that's the value name that we chose is equal to on submit then this layer is gonna be active so as i am turning this you see i'm basically having atom control down here i'm having vmix control down here atom control down here etc there's one thing that we want now and that is to make sure this one is not shown when we are not on the vmix atom page i think that would make sense and the quickest way of doing that would be to go down here, click this guy, and then say the whole behavior, if you choose show more, you go to the bottom here, there is this active if condition that you can change and say, um, we should only see this if the menu is, oof, let me see, sorry, menu is on, no, if it's, if the menu is vmix, okay. And so it now means that as I'm going away from this, I only see this toggle when we are on the vmix layer right here. Now you could argue with if, if this should really be called vmix or if vmix should have this privileged position of being the root layer with the atom overriding it and so on. Doesn't matter. I hope you have learned a lot by watching this and seeing how we can apply that to um, to this layer up here and having multiple switches controlled from the same controller.